all right so we are continuing our discussions around mistral spelled out so there is another component in the mistral architecture which i showed in the uh, first diagram in the introduction video that is rms norm right now let's talk about rms norm and understand how it is different from the other traditional normalization approach right so first let's talk about why we need to normalize the data right so in case our data are on the different scales right we have two features this is just i am talking about in case of like traditional machine learning or deep learning so we have two features which are like edge and distance right so edge can be a value which ranges from 0 to 100 but distance can be a value which can range starting from 0 to 10,000 kilometer or whatever uh, thousand kilometer it, it can be right so we can easily see the scale is different in terms of two these two features so what we do is we have uh, kind of normalize the data and bring the two features in the same scale so so that the consideration of these two features will be same in case of uh, model feature importance right so that's why we kind of normalize the data and which can also help us to consider all the features equally right so then also it kind of stabilize the training process so this is kind of the example which you can see is like in case of normalized data the training process is much more faster and the optimization is also much more proper but in case of uh, unnormalized data so you can see the uh, the optimization process is kind of a zigzag process and which can take longer time to uh, like reach the global minima and which can also result in unstabilized uh, training process right so and also with this uh, two things it can also improve the model performance right so uh, in case of normalized data the faster convergence will also result in the uh, proper model performance in case of the normalized data so generally we uh, use this formulas to normalize the data so we have our data which is x then we calculate the mean then we subtract the x uh, minus the mean and then we divide it by the standard deviation which we which kind of uh, standardizes the data and uh, and, and we get the uh, rescale data in this uh, manner right so generally we use two concepts which are like batch normalization and also like layer normalization apart from the um, input data normalization right so if you have a neural network which looks like this so we have our input layer so that data goes into here so this data which goes in here that also we can normalize and get the data d dash but we can also kind of uh, normalize the data which are going into the each of this uh, neurons right so that data also we can normalize so to normalize this data which are intermediate layers data so we generally use the concept of batch normalization and layer normalization now let's talk about uh, in detail what is this batch normalization and real layer normalization is and how they are kind of different uh, in terms of uh, the operation right so for an example if you have this uh, four features which starts from f1 to f4 and we have the corresponding values for each of these features for 10 rows so this is kind of uh, the shape of this uh, data set is like 10 cross 4 right so in case of uh, batch normalization what we do is for each features right so starting from f1 to f4 we calculate the mean and this is the variance part right so this we calculate for each features for f1 f2 f3 and f4 we kind of calculate the mean and the uh, variance for each of these two uh, each of these four features then what we do is we kind of uh, normalize the data by subtracting the mean at first with the data and then we divide it by the square root of the variance and we also add a term which is epsilon so this is uh, just to avoid divide by zero whenever your variance is zero so in that case uh, it can throw an error by divide by zero error just to avoid that we add this extra constant which is epsilon which is a very small value that we add uh, to the variance and then we take the square root of that and add it by the uh, by subtracting the mean from the data then what we do is we have these two learnable parameters gamma and beta uh, these two learnable parameters are to scale the input uh, which will uh, according to the loss function that we are using in the model 
right so we kind of multiply this gamma with the uh, this aij dash and then we add the term beta so these two parameters are learned during the back propagation of the model and we kind of get this final aij dash uh, for each of these features right so this will be replaced by this aij values so ai as we can see this we do for each of these features right so each of these features we kind of calculate the mean and variance and we normalize the data but what happens in case of the layer normalization right so in layer, layer normalization what happens is we calculate the mean and the variance for uh, each rows right so for each of these rows we will calculate the mean and uh, variance and then we kind of normalize the data at the row level right so the batch normalization has more to do with the features and the layer normalization is more to do with the each of the rows so or the data items which are present in this uh, example right and then we use the same formula which we have used here in case of batch normalization also and we also then uh, like multiply this gamma and also add the beta term to this normalized input value and we get the fi final uh, normalized value which we, which you can see here so these are kind of uh, the row normalized values for each of this uh, data points now let's talk about what is this uh, rms norm or the root mean squared normalization so of layer normalization is kind of depends on the two factors right which is like recentering and rescaling the invariance property so recentering means we subtract uh, we kind of subtract the mean from the data and rescaling invariance is this divide by the square root and then adding epsilon term to the variance part right but this paper which we are uh, focusing here this root mean square normalization paper talks about that the mainly the success of layer normalization only depends on the uh, this rescaling invariance property where we kind of divide the data by the uh, square root of the variance added by a epsilon term right so this rms norm paper hypothesized that rescaling invariance is the reason the main reason for the success of the layer norm rather than the recentering and it kind of eliminates this recentering part so we don't need to calculate the mean for each of the uh, data items and then we subtract so this whole uh, part is kind of eliminated the calculation of mean and then doing the subtraction from the data and then divided by the rescaling part right uh, the, it kind of uh, uses this formula where the data data point ai is divided by the rms a and it also has a learnable parameter gi which is also similar to the alpha and beta that we talked about in case of batch normalization and layer normalization and the formula for rms a is nothing but square root of 1 by n uh, a square a i square and this a i starts from 1 to n right and this g is also as i mentioned this is kind of a learnable parameter which helps in scaling um, the input value according to the loss function right so this rms norm is kind of simply simplifies the process of normalization by eliminating the uh, mean statistics which also results in less computation and faster training time compared to the layer normalization and also this works well in case of the transformer architecture so this uh, will end this video i i hope you got an understanding of what this animus normalization is and so yeah thank you thank you for your time if you haven't subscribed this channel uh, please subscribe and if you have any questions or feedback please let me know in the comment i will try to answer those and uh, thank you, see you in the next video of this series.